So, I have come to Buttermere for a few days in the Lake District and just arrived about an hour ago, checked into the hotel and I've just come down to the lake at Buttermere and I'm just watching this light. So, I've been here for about a quarter of an hour. I'm going to have a walk around shortly, but I've just come to the, <coughs> come to the lake and so I've, uh, there's quite a bit of wind today. As you can see, there's a bit of movement on the lake. So what I've done is I've put a 10 stop filter on. Uh, I've put a, this, I've put a, a 0.9 neutral density, graduated neutral density on. And uh, there's snow on top of the mountains. You can just see. Uh, I've got the 7 to 14 on. I'm at f6.3 and I'm using the EM5 Mark II's live time feature, which... Uh, allows me to build, see the image build and I'm just waiting the cloud is absolutely great it's sort of just hanging over there's a little bit of blue sky occasionally but behind me you'll see that the sun is just popping through there and it just every so often is lighting around the edge of the lake so I'm just standing here waiting for the sun to do its thing and then I'm going to have a walk over and try and get the sun set on Crummock water which is just across the way there basically I'm in between the two lakes uh, but it's really really great here absolutely love it there's so much to be done so I'm just doing a quick bit of shooting now uh, stay here till sunset which is about half seven it's about half six now quarter past six something like that uh, I'm going to stay here uh, I've just set up with this got this it's pretty uh, standard shot. I've got this rock in the foreground which is in the shot. I've got the uh, fence leading in to the shot and uh, and these mountains in the background. In the distance there at the bottom of the mountain is the iconic white cottage uh, of the, that you very often see in Buttermere. I really should be over on the other lake, the Crummock Water. If you look over there, the light is starting to look really nice over there. But that's where I'm going next. I'm just going to wait for a bit of light here. And I'm heading over that way for sunset. But the light over there is looking absolutely incredible at the moment. Hoping for a really good sunset, actually. So uh, let's see what happens. See what we get. I just had some good good, uh, good light a minute ago. So uh, hopefully I've got a couple of bankers and uh, can move on soon. Let's see what we get. I have been to Buttermere quite a few times and yeah, I've never discovered this path. Behind me, the camp, there's a campsite. I never knew it was there. Uh, anyway, I'm just, so I'm just walking to Crummock Water where I've shot a few times. But I've normally gone there via the road. So uh, <clears throat> the campsite looks nice back there, but it's Easter weekend. But it's cold Easter weekend. And uh, I'm glad I'm staying in the hotel, the Bridge Hotel, by the way. Very nice. I stayed there before. But no TV and no Wi-Fi in the rooms. Apart from that, it's brilliant. So, um, yeah, so I'm just having a wander along. But it's really nice. Really nice <laughs> along here. Like I say, I've never walked along this path. I'm literally only a kilometre from the hotel. I've spent a lot of time around here. Anyway, time to press on. Uh, otherwise, I'll miss sunset. So somewhere around here, there is a famous lone tree. Now, that looks pretty good. That's not a lone tree. That's three trees. There's also a boat which I've seen pictures of. There is a guy called Phil Buckle who shoots some beautiful stuff around here. Some sheep, look. And he has shot this boat. Over there is an upside down boat. It doesn't really look in the right place to me. Um, but trouble is there's no signal around here, I don't think. So I can't really have a look. So I'm wandering aimlessly looks a little bit wet underfoot here as well, which I'm not very keen on. Right, well that boat looks... 
Doesn't look right to me. And that's not a lone tree. And the boat is just sort of stuck at home. I'm going to go and have a look at it. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter anyway, because it's starting to look really nice. We could get something here. Well, I can't find a lone tree. I can find some trees that stand on their own, but I can't find a lone tree. So I found this nice little <coughs> split in this stream. Uh, come over that little bridge behind me. Found this split in the stream. So I've just plonked the camera. Uh, where is it? In the stream. Uh, I've just jumped onto the bank for now. But uh, so I'm just waiting for the light. The light was really good. And now it's not so good. But there's a couple of things to shoot. There's a log over there that would do as a foreground interest. Um, so I'm just waiting to see what happens. I, I don't know. It's not looking promising. The light, as I walked through here, the light was really nice. Um, but I think I might have lost that now. But such is the way of landscape photography. It doesn't always happen. So we'll hang on here, see what happens. Uh, nothing happens in the next half an hour. I'll go and drink some beer. Right. So for anyone who's watching who is new to landscape photography and looks at the pictures that, that some landscape photographers get and thinks, how on earth do they get that shot? This is a lesson right here today. I have wandered around here. This is an area I know kind of. Been here a few times. I've wandered around for an hour, hour and a half now. It's now seven o'clock, I think. It's ten to seven. The sun sets tonight at uh, 25 to 8. Before I came here, I looked on the photographer's ephemeris to see where the sun sets tonight and how the light may sit on the land, on the land and the lake. The sun's going to set somewhere over in that direction, somewhere-ish. I'm stood in the middle of a stream, getting wet boots because I've got my walking boots on and they leak. And I'm waiting for light that probably isn't going to happen tonight. It's just dull, dark and yuck. So, if anybody thinks you just turn up and click, that isn't how it works. Or very rarely. Sometimes, yes, you get lucky. But generally, this is how it is. You have to wander around. You have to look for your location. You have to spend time, lots of time. You have to know you set up your camera. And then you have to wait on the light. And, and you wait. And you wait. And you wait. And sometimes you just go home with nothing. So, <clears throat> here we are. It's uh, now 20 minutes to... Uh, to sunset and it's still rubbish so what do I do I wait just for that tiny chance that it is going to improve I don't believe it will for a second but that is the lot of a landscape photographer it's not a long walk back it's only a kilometer or something like that so it's not the end of the world nice warm pub waiting for me with nice beer and a nice warm meal so but I am getting cold now, and I really don't think anything's going to happen. But I will wait, and I will see. Now, I don't want to get too excited, but just over there, there is a little bit of red over the top of the mountain. I've had some rain in the last five minutes, which came not enough to wet me, just enough to put some spots on my filters, so I had to clean them. It's now, what is the time? Five minutes from sunset. There is a little bit of red over that mountain. I I'm sure you can't see it. Hang on. Over there. A little bit of fire. Um, 
that possibly, possibly could, in a minute, just do something of interest. I've taken the top 10 stop filter away. Don't need it anymore. We're getting about, at F16, we're getting two second exposure. That's, that's good enough for me. Um, ISO 100. It's just, there's just a chance we get something. The only trouble is, it's sort of broken up here now. I don't know, maybe we'll get something after sunset. Um, don't know. Otherwise, we'll hope for some better weather in the morning. Give it another 10 minutes and then I'm going to the pub. Sunset didn't happen, or at least it happened, but not here. Well, I guess it happened here, but it happened behind clouds. So, uh, so that's it. Now, in terms of what we got, um, I'm sure I can make a nice photograph out of it. Uh, I could definitely do something with. Um, which way do I go? This way. I'm sure I can do something with in post-processing to make that a nice photograph, but not a killer shot. Um, so, you know, it, all is not lost. But it got me thinking about what is the difference? What is the key difference between a mediocre landscape photographer and a top landscape photographer? And... I've come to the conclusion that it can be sewn up in one word. And that word is optimism. I think that is the difference between someone who gets lots of good shots and someone who maybe gets a good shot every, every now and then. And it's the optimism to stay and just sit it out and think, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Even when you're, everything in you is telling you, no way. No way is it going to be good. Just to keep going and keep saying, no, something might happen here. And I think, really, if there's one difference, that's it. You've got to have the optimism. Mind you, mine's been a bit bashed out of me tonight. But after a few beers, all will be good with the world again. Let's see what happens in the morning. Good morning. Well, it's uh, 25 to 7. It's Easter Sunday. And uh, it's about 10 minutes to sunrise. Uh, so I've just headed out from the hotel at Buttermere. And I'm just walking down the track, which is about five minute walk down to the edge of the lake at Buttermere. Um, I'm going to set up to begin with doing the shot that I did last night uh, with the fence going into the water that didn't really give me an awful lot because uh, of the conditions. Now, are the conditions going to be any better this morning? Really good question. There is definite promise. If we look at the sky, it's overcast, but there are definite gaps in it so ever the optimist I'm gonna have a walk down and see what uh, see what we can do mornings where you are you're in the wrong place all the time so this is Buttermere looking that way 
and over there is where all the light is and that's Crummock Water and that's not where I was. However, I did find the Lone Tree which is back there and I think I got some nice shots just as the sun was coming up. It didn't give us a lot of light but I think I did all right. Right, so I'm pleased with this morning. Uh, I got this nice shot of the lone tree which I'm really pleased with. And I also got this shot, just looking out across the lake, which uh, I'm also pretty pleased with. So all in all, uh, a nice little jaunt out this morning. So <coughs> the sun's well and truly up. It's uh, just gone 10 o'clock. Had my breakfast, had a shower. And so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna go for a walk around Buttermere, around the lake. Uh, there's a beautiful path along the side cycled along here years ago on a little trip I did around the around the lakes so I'm having a little walk along and what I'm going to do is I'm heading up there's a boffy up near the Honister Pass sort of between where I am and and the Honister Slate Mine and uh, I'm going to head up there's a nice view out over this boffy see what I get but the main thing is to try and keep the sun out of the shot because it's just too bright and it just spoils it completely. So yeah, let's see where that takes us and uh, head up to this boffy. So I've just stopped off here, uh, much closer to this cottage over there behind me. And uh, the light was looking pretty nice on it. So I just literally stopped, uh, just handheld 12 to 100, just a few couple of different focal lengths, um, zoom quite a way in and out, put a polarizer on just to get some of the reflections off but it's quite nice, the, the lake is quite still. So um, we'll see what they came out like but literally just handheld. Uh, this is where I am, that's the Buttermere behind me so I've walked around there and there's a bridge just over there that I stopped and took a nice shot of the river that runs into the lake. Uh, Polarizer was working wonders with that. Um, took all the reflection off the off the stream, which uh, so should be a nice shot. I think probably the clouds were nice, the light was nice. I had to I had to um, use the exposure compensation and go down a couple of stops uh, so that the sky didn't uh, <clears throat> didn't blow out uh, so I found the um, <clears throat> the bossy and it's really really good view so I've set up just above it here um, and I'm not doing a long exposure. I've got the 12 100 on at the moment and it's not quite wide enough, but it, it it's okay. The good thing about it is I can have the um, the uh, polarizing filter on and that's really working wonders at the moment with the colors and the reflections on the water. So I'm gonna use that and then uh, I'm gonna put the seven to 14. I'm just gonna sit here and have a few Jaffa cakes, quite a climb up here. Um, so the light's good, beautiful dappled light. That's looking, it's really nice. Um, and there's three people having a picnic, which adds to the adds to the scale of the thing. So I'm going to get on a shoot. So I literally made it just in time. I've got set up, I've got a few shots with both lenses and then it, started, it clouded over, started snowing. So I've sat here for a bit longer. It's not looking good now. 
So there's a tarn just up there, so I'm going to try and have a wander to that. Let's see where it takes me. So I found the tarn, and <clears throat> but the light's not very good. Um, I'll put the 7 to 14 on, and uh, I'm going to shoot a bit. Um, I'm doing a five second exposure, uh, just to smooth the water out. Don't want any movement in the clouds. So really, I need a bit of light. It's a beautiful scene. Lovely mountains in the background with snow on. It's a nice little tarn. But uh, not really sure it's going to work without a bit of light. And it's not looking like there will be any. Um, got a 10 stop filter on. And a 0.9 graduated neutral density. Soft edge. Uh, I'm at F8. Uh, ISO 200. And I've just upped the uh, exposure compensation by 0.3. So somebody's pitched a tent over there and I may go and do a shot with that in the foreground. So I'll do a few more of these and then we'll see. Just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. What a view. That's what I've walked all this way for. And views like that all day and got some nice shots and now I'm heading back down to the pub for a well-earned drink and it's just starting to snow again. <sighs> to the pub. Right, so um, <clears throat> I've just come across this bridge walking back and uh, I thought it might make a nice shot. So what I'm gonna do is tempting to go really wide with this, but basically you, in the background, you've got the lake and uh, I need to shorten that. I think seven will be, it will look great in the foreground, but you'll lose what's in the distance, which is the lake, because the lake's, we're pretty low now. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot with the 12, 100 at 12 mil. I'm just gonna put a graduated filter on. I've got the polarizer on, but I don't think it'll do a lot because the light isn't great, but I think this will be nice leading lines. And uh, I'm just gonna do it handheld. So here we go. You, you can come you can come through So the key here is to make sure you're in the center of the bridge. It's, you know, it needs to come exactly from both sides. So make sure you're in the center, make sure you're level, get all that sorted. So the key thing is just to make sure, it's just a little go on the way back really, but I thought it was nice. People come along all the time when you're doing photography like this and you know, get in the way and you know, you just gotta wait and wait. Um, they might be quite good in the distance there. They're now in the distance. So I'm gonna shoot a, a bit more. The polarizer's doing nothing, but there's no reason it shouldn't be on. The other thing is I've got, I'm on manual focus and uh, I've got focus peaking on, which allows me to see what's in, what's in focus and what isn't. I'm at F8. So just focusing manually. So let's crack off a few more shots. Uh, one good thing about using a lens like the 
12100, which isn't as wide, is the fil I can twist the filter. So I was able to rotate it so that uh, it was just on the sky. You can't do that. You get vignetting in the corners. So you can't do that with 7 to 14. So you kind of compromise and you get dark on the on the mountains as well. So, oh, excuse me. Anyway, we'll see what that's like. Right, now definitely to the pub.